everyone. One of the most important questions that is asked in carbohydrate chemistry is how you can convert a Fischer projection into the Haworth or chair form. Today I will show you a short and precise method to do these conversions and use this knowledge to solve some relevant examples that are usually asked in exams. Fischer projection is just a way to represent carbohydrates in open chain form. In solution, more than 99% of carbohydrate exists in the cyclic form. It could be either a six-membered ring containing oxygen, which is called pyranose, or a five-membered ring containing oxygen, which is called furanose. In order to determine if a carbohydrate sugar is D or L sugar, you should just look at the Fischer projection of it with aldehyde on the top and CH2OH group, which is the last group in the bottom. And just take a look at the stereogenic carbon, which is right above this last group. And if hydroxy group is on the right hand side, then this sugar becomes a D sugar. And similarly, if the hydroxy group is on the left hand side, this sugar becomes L sugar. It doesn't matter how many stereogenic centers are between this last group and the top that is aldehyde group. There can be as many as stereogenic carbons as you want. How do we determine the if it's D or L sugar? Now, as I had mentioned before, we are just taking a look at this particular stereogenic carbon and you can see that the hydroxy group is on the left hand side. So this is L glucose. Before we get started with the conversion, let's quickly review this reaction where a nucleophile, which is hydroxy group, uh, an alcohol group over here, attacks the electrophilic carbon, which is aldehyde carbonyl, and then results in the formation of hemiacetone. Exactly same reaction happens when the cyclization is occurring in case of carbohydrates in solutions. Uh, say, for example, in exams, you are asked questions, convert mannose into alpha and manopyranose. Now, let's break this down. Alpha indicates the term uh, where will be the substituent placed at the anomeric position. L means it should be derived from L sugar and mano is derived from mannose and then pyranose means six-membered ring containing oxygen. If you look at the sugar, this is an L sugar because if you look at this carbon, the hydroxy group is on the left, so it is already L mannose. In order to form six member drink, you will have to use the, hydro uh, the lone pair on this particular hydroxy group and then attack on this electrophilic carbonyl. So you see that. If these lone pairs attacks this carbonyl group, it forms a six number ring. You can start the counting here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to draw a very quick intermediate that is formed as a result of the cyclization. draw the cyclic ring that is the six membered ring you can see that a six membered ring is formed here draw a six membered ring oxy containing oxygen and let's label this carbons first one two three four five and six and you should number this sugar clockwise four and then five the second step is draw all the up and down bonds In order to place the substituents in the Haworth projection, you should just remember a small rule that is written down in this table. If the position of the substituent in the Fischer projection is on the left hand side, then it goes on the upside in the Haworth form. Uh, if it is on the right hand side, then the substituent goes down. If it's a D sugar, whatever is the last group goes up in the Haworth or chair form and similarly for L sugar, it goes down. You can see that in carbon 2, the hydroxy group is on the right hand side. Right means it goes down. So I'm placing OH here. In carbon 3, you can see hydroxy is again on the right hand side. So it's down here. On carbon 4, the hydroxy group is on the left hand side. So it goes up here. Put all the edges here. You know that it's a L sugar and CH2OH is the last group. It goes down according to this rule. 
and H is on the top. This position is the anomeric center. The question asks you to draw the alpha anomer of this sugar. So alpha means the hydroxy group goes down and hence the H goes up. If the question asks you to draw the beta L manopyranose, then your answer would be the hydroxy group on the top and H in the bottom and rest all the placement of the substituents would be exactly the same. We are done with the Howarth representation and once you know that it's a it's very simple process to draw the chair conformation. So for drawing the chair conformation you just have to draw a six numbered ring containing oxygen in the chair form. Draw all the axial and equatorial bonds All right, and then next step is label the atoms clockwise. So one, two, three, four, five. We are going to follow the same rule that is given in this table. Now carbon two, OH on the right means uh, it goes down in chair form. Three, OH on the right, so it goes down. Four, OH is on the left, so OH, it goes up over here. Rest all our edges. Because it's a L sugar, so CH2OH group that goes down, CH2OH, and hydrogen comes up. This is the anomeric center again. The question asks you to draw the beta L, then like I said before, beta indicates that the hydroxy group at the anomeric position is on the upside and H is on the downside. Say for example, if the question asks you to draw the alpha L manopyranose in the chair form, again, alpha indicates that the hydroxy group is on the downside and H is on the upside. This completes the chair form. So just to remember alpha means that the hydroxy group at the anomeric position is down and beta means the hydroxy group at the anomeric position is up and this rule holds for all types of sugars. The next question that I'm going to solve is to convert the l manose from Fisher into alpha l manofuranose. Now, furanose means five-membered ring containing oxygen. So, for creating the five-membered ring, you have to use the lone pairs from this oxygen in order to attack this electrophilic carbonyl. Now, you see a five-membered ring is formed, say one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw the immediate product that you get as a result of this attack. In order to convert this into the five-membered ring, first just draw a five-membered ring containing oxygen and draw all the up and down bonds. And now let's label these carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And let's label it clockwise. One, two, three, four. We are again going to follow the rule that's given in this table over here. Uh, carbon two, OH right, OH goes down here. Carbon 3 OH right goes down here. Carbon 4, because it is, you can see that it's an L sugar, so the last group, which is this particular group over here, it goes down. So let's call it R. And the H goes up here because carbon number one is the anomeric center and the question asks us to draw the alpha anomer so the hydroxy group grows on the bottom and H is on the top here and let's fill the rest of the substituents with a hydrogen. So let's elaborate this uh, R group over here. In order to do that you have to first determine what's the absolute configuration of this particular cogenic carbon. So let's assign the priority that is this is uh, f first priority and this whole group comes in second priority and CH2OH is the third priority and the hydrogen over here is the fourth. If you see it goes one, two, three clockwise. So the configuration of this one should be R but because the least priority group is on the horizontal line the absolute configuration of this stereogenic carbon is S. The absolute configuration never changes over here. 
We can just put all these three substituents over here, CH2OH, and then H, and then OH. Let's assign the priority 1, and this whole group is second, and then this is 3, and this is 4. We want it to draw it in such a way that the absolute configuration of this particular carbon is S. 1, 2, 3. We can actually do that if you put hydroxy group is on the red side and the group that is of least priority on the dash side. This is what the Hayworth form of uh, L nanose in the form of Puranos looks like. Now you are ready to solve this practice test questions that are asked in exams. Uh, for example, convert sorbose into alpha D sorbopyranose. That will be our first question. First, let's determine what kind of sugar this is. You, as you can see, there's a ketone functionality in here. That's why it's a ketose sugar. And uh, just treat this whole group like an aldehyde group. And as I mentioned earlier, you are interested in the configuration of this particular carbon. Uh, you can see that OH is on the right hand side. So it's a D sorbose. The question asks you to draw the pyranose form of this sugar. Pyranose is a six-membered ring containing oxygen. So we have to find out which hydroxy is responsible for generating a six-membered ring structure, which is this uh, hydroxy group that's attached to the primary alcohol. This, these lone pairs attacks the electrophilic carbonyl group and generates an immediate product, which looks like This. Now you can see that it's a six-membered ring, so let's draw a habit form of this structure. And let's start counting the carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And let's count this carbon in clockwise fashion. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this should be starting from carbon two because you can see that the carbon two is the anomeric center. So two, three, four, five. So let's draw all the up and down bonds on this Havoc form. Now, according to that rule of the table, you can see that on third carbon, OH is on the right hand side, which means it goes down here. Here, carbon four, OH is on the left, so it goes up here. Carbon five, OH is on the right, so it goes down here. And uh, carbon number six, you see there are two hydrogens attached to C, which is a non-stereogenic carbon, so it doesn't matter uh, what goes up or what goes down here. Let's fill the rest of the substituent as hydrogens. This carbon is anomeric center. Uh, one of the group is hydroxyl group, and the other group is CH2OH group. And the question asks us to draw the alpha form, which means the hydroxy group is in the bottom, and the other group, which is CH2OH group, goes on the top. Say, for example, if the question asks you to draw a beta d sorbopyranose, you just reverse these groups over here. The OH group goes on the top and CH2OH group goes on the bottom. That's the answer to this first question. Let's draw the alpha d sorbofuranose form of d sorbose. The question asks us to draw the five-membered ring containing oxygen, draw the furanose form of this sugar. Our first task is to determine which lone pairs on oxygen are we supposed to use. Uh, so you can see that if we use these lone pairs over here and then attack that on this electrophilic carbon, it generates a five-membered ring. So you can start counting here, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw an immediate product that you're going to get as a result of this attack. So OH and then H, OH here, and then let's draw a cyclic form, which is five membered ring containing oxygen, that is the Furanos form, and let's start counting the carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you know that the second carbon is here, anomeric center. So we'll start counting here, two, three, four, and five. And let's draw all the up and down bonds. 
and you will be using the rule of that table in order to fill in the substituents. So carbon 3 OH right, so it goes bottom and H is on the top. Uh, carbon 4 OH on the left, so left means OH is on the top and H bottom. Uh, now carbon 5, now you know that this is a D sugar. The CH2OH group, that is the last group, goes on the top. CH2OH. And here, the question asks us to draw the alpha form of this furanose. You see that there are again two groups over here, hydroxy and CH2OH group. So alpha form means the hydroxy group goes down, which means that the other group, that is CH2OH group, goes on the top. Now, say for example, if the question asks you to draw the beta D furanose, uh, beta D sorbofuranose, then you just reverse the placement of these two substituents. That is CH2OH group goes on the bottom and OH group goes on the top. That completes the answer to this question. Other types of questions that can you can be asked is what is the relationship between A and B? Now you can see that one of them is the Fisher form and the other one is the cyclic form. You cannot make a comparison between the two and then say oh they are enantiomers or diastereomers or epimers or anomers. You have two options. Either you can convert A into the cyclic form and compare the two cyclic forms and give the answer or you can convert B into the Fisher form and then uh, arrive at an answer. I personally prefer the second pathway that is convert the cyclic form into the Fisher projection. How do we do that? You remember that we had numbered carbon atoms on here clockwise. So let's number them first, four and then five and then six. Our next step is open up the ring. What helps in opening up the ring is the oxygen lone pair which is attached to the anomeric center here. So these lone pairs pushes the electron over here and opens up the ring. I'm going to draw the product that you get uh, in exactly same fashion uh, in the cyclic ring form. Uh, this particular carbonyl over here, you can see that the other group is H. So this converts into the aldehyde and all the substituent remains placed at the same position. Let's number it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, and then 6. Now you're going to use the rule of the table. So you know that it's a hexose sugar. We are going to draw a Fisher form. Now label the carbons, one, two, three. Um, I think it's better if I draw it over here so that we can make a head on head comparison. Let's draw a hexo sugar over here and label that as one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Carbon number one is nothing but aldehyde, so CHO. Carbon two, the hydroxy group is on the top, which means if you go to the Fisher form, then it should be on the left hand side. Carbon 3 hydroxy down means going back to the Fisher form, it should be on the right hand side. Uh, hydroxy is down here again, which means it should go on the right hand side. If you uh, look at the position of the hydroxy over here, you know that uh, first you have to determine what kind of sugar this is. If you look at this, the CH2OH group is on the downside which means uh, that if you look in the table and then see that the last group, that is CH2OH group, if it's on the downside, it means it is coming from the L sugar. So L sugar means at this carbon, the hydroxy group is on the left hand side and H is on the right hand side and CH2OH group goes here. So this is the Fisher form that we have got from the cyclic form of B. Let's make a comparison between A and B. Now you see that if you draw a mirror over here. These two are nothing but enantiomers. They are the non-superimposable mirror image of each other. So the answer is the relationship between A and B, they are enantiomers. I will make more videos where I will solve more complex questions on this topic of carbohydrates. If you have any questions, please write it down in this comment section below. I would be happy to provide you the answers. Please like and subscribe to my channel. This will motivate me to make more videos and I can help you to improve your knowledge of chemistry.